Hi everybody, this is Matt. Uh, this video is the first in a planned series of videos that I'm going to do to explain soldering to uh, hobbyists. Um, in, the, uh, in the evening and under the moonlight, I am a hobbyist and model builder like uh, many of you that are watching. Uh, during the day, I uh, work in the electronics uh, manufacturing industry. I, uh, I do uh, solder training for companies. I also do prototype assembly and I also do some uh, entrepreneurial kinds of things with uh, my own product line uh, which you uh, may have seen uh, floating around uh, under the guise of starlighting projects. Um, the video series is really intended to sort of share a bunch of information that I've uh, gained over the years. I've been working again for 35 years in, uh, in electronics manufacturing and I've learned a lot of things about tools and techniques and methods that um, I thought I would, uh, would share with you guys. Uh, I've seen uh, a number of resources on the internet, now YouTube and such, and there's a lot of questions about what's the best way to do something or what's, what are good ways to do things. Um, again, I, I do uh, soldering uh, to a particular uh, industry certification so I've encountered a lot of uh, good bad and indifferent uh, ways to do things uh, my goal here is basically to uh, provide uh, information that you can use that will help you uh, conquer some of the challenges that you run into when you're trying to uh, build and light up models uh, I'll be talking about materials like uh, solder and flux its companion. I'll be talking about soldering irons themselves in a bit of detail. Uh, needle nose pliers, wire strippers, cutters. Uh, I'll also be talking a lot about components, LEDs, resistors, capacitors, and how to solder them best. Uh, materials like uh, magnet wire. Actually, after I uh, do this introduction, I'm going to show you how to actually strip and tin magnet wire with a method that I've been using for a while. I'll also talk a bit about uh, printed circuit boards uh, and how to assemble them. If, uh, you know, techniques that you can use to do them so you can get better results. Uh, I hope that this uh, this series goes on for a while. I do have planned to do probably five to ten maybe of these videos, but I'm also uh, certainly willing to conquer any uh, any project that, uh, uh, as far as a tutorial goes, that uh, if you guys have a, a specific questions or specific things you want to know about, if you uh, PM me or leave a comment, I'd be glad glad to cover those. So if you give me a minute, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clear the clear the stuff from my bench, and then I'll be back and I will show you how to strip and tin magnet wire. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I thought I would start off by talking about the tools and materials that I'm going to be using to do this uh, work. The first thing I need, obviously, is a pair of diagonal cutters to cut, cut and trim the wire to length. I'll need some solder. I'm going to use uh, solder with a wire core or with a flux core in it. Uh, I have a, uh, a, a wipe, just a paper towel or a Kleenex, basically, so that I can wipe off the wire as I go. Um, I have a flux pen. Uh, that fl the flux in uh, this little pen that I've got here will basically adds to the uh, a, a little bit of flux to the uh, uh, flux in the wire solder, uh, which helps uh, promote wetting. Flux basically promotes wetting. It also uh, removes oxidation. Uh, both are really uh, useful features if you're trying to solder something that wants to oxidize. Uh, the, another important tool that I've got here is I have a. Uh, I have a, a, a pipe lighter, uh, a blowtorch, jet lighter, I've seen them called a variety of different things. Uh, I picked this one up at a, uh, at a trade show that I was in, it was a, it was a giveaway, but um, it's got a very strong uh, flame on it, uh, blue flame, very pointed, very long, very hot. A, a standard butane lighter really won't do the job very well because uh, it doesn't get too. It doesn't get hot enough. What I'm att att attempting to do when I strip the uh, the wire uh, 
or strip the insulation from the from the magnet wire is to burn off the insulation very quickly. The small flame basically allows me to control where that heat is going, so I can you know I'm only going to strip off a small area of it, and the intensity of the uh, blue flame basically burns it off quickly. Uh, the last thing uh, to talk about here briefly uh, is is the soldering iron. I'm using a, uh, a temperature controlled soldering iron. This is about a hundred dollar tool. I'll talk uh, in, in great length in, in future in a future video about uh, the pros and cons of different kinds of soldering irons that are out there. But I'm basically just using a soldering iron with a, ch uh, ch a small chisel tip on it. Uh, I'll zoom in on that so you can see that a little bit. It's a basically got a chisel shape to it makes it really easy to uh, uh, attach uh, to, uh, to to the uh, materials being joined so at any rate um, again I'm gonna clean up here just for a second and and then I'm gonna go ahead and get back at this you're really gonna be surprised I think at how quickly and easily this can be done it takes under 45 seconds basically to do the whole the whole uh, strip and tin operation at any rate um, let me uh, get set up to do it cleanly and I'll be right back. Okay, so here are my magnet wires. This is a 30 gauge. The green that I'm working on is a 26 gauge. The technique that I'm going to show you is basically the same for the bigger and smaller gauges of the wire. Uh, I'm going to use a, a flame to, bur to burn off the insulation, and that flame is uh, pretty hot. It's a blue flame again, so you probably want to set uh, the wire. You know, give yourself a good inch, inch and a quarter between the end of the end of the wire and your fingertips, so that you don't get burned. Um, you're only going to be in the flame for a few seconds, so you, you don't have a whole lot of opportunity to get too hot, but just in case. Um, again, you want to use this blue flame, nice sharp blue flame run the wire through that flame once or twice real quickly I only it was in the it was in the flame maybe for two seconds um, if you were to uh, stick a ruler on there I'm a little bit over an eighth of an inch uh, st stripped off of it I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on that so you can see how clean that is uh, I think I'll wipe it off first so I'm use my paper towel uh, to clean it off but you can see that the wire is still very copper colored um, if it was brown, if I had kept the flame kept the flame on it for too long, if it was brown, it would be oxidized. If it's oxidized, it's going to be harder to solder and tin. So I would probably just trim that off and start again. All right, so I've uh, stripped the wire. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to tin the wire. I'm going to use my flux pen to add a little bit of uh, flux to that wire. I'm going to hold the wire between my index finger and my thumb. And then I'm going to hold the uh, solder with other fingers. What I'm doing here, I'm going to back up. I drink four cups of coffee a day and I shake a lot. And I'm sure a lot of you guys shake a lot. So what we want to do is we want to try to minimize the effects of that. And the one way I find over the years that really helps that is to, is to anchor the fatty part of your hand on your work surface. You want to do that with the hand that's holding the wire and the solder. And you also want to do that with the hand that's holding the soldering iron. So, uh, in general terms, uh, once you're holding them together, you're using the wire basically to, you're just hold, using the uh, two fingers down there to hold the solder more, more or less steady. You're using the, the index finger and thumb to hold the wire, and basically all you're doing is touching them together, and then you get your iron on there very quickly, touching them both at the same time, and then you're done. You wipe the wire off. Um, I'll zoom in on it. You can see how the wire's completely tin, nice nice and shiny. Get back, there we go. You can see how it's nice and shiny. And whenever you go to attach that to an LED or a resistor or a capacitor or whatever circuitry you're putting it to, you'll have a really good uh, results uh, soldering it. So that's a short version of it. I'll go back and do it one or two more times just so you can see it without me yapping. Um, at any rate, uh, here we go. I'll go ahead and demonstrate a couple more times. So uh, cut your, get your wire cut to length. Use your very hot uh, flame to burn off the insulation. A couple passes, that's all that's required there. Wipe the wire. Flux the wire. 
old wire and your solder wipe your soldering iron tip off touch it to the both wire but with the wire solder and the wire itself wipe the wire one more time and you are done again I'll show you a close-up so you can see how cleanly this happens very easy process to do it the tricks there are basically a lot of it is making sure that your metals are not oxidized uh, when I talk in future about soldering irons and just the soldering process in general I'll show you how to achieve nice clean solder joints most of the time at any rate I hope that was helpful and I will see you around the internet thanks for stopping